people chime in. If not, I'm just going to narrate to myself. But basically, the deal is um, I've recorded various video clips of my latest progress, but I just haven't gotten around to actually editing and uploading. So at this point, <laughs> may as well just uh, see, if, you know, like one old MSNBC anchor did and say, fuck it, we'll do it live. Who was that guy? I don't know. He used to be a douche, and now he's not so much of a douche since he's uh, <laughs> come to his senses. But basically, I'm saying that at this point. Fuck it. We're going to do it live. Hey, here's somebody. Let's see if I can remember how to turn on the flashlight on here in April. Flash. There we go. Some light. So I'm just doing this live because I haven't been able to get around later right before bedtime to go in there and get on the computer, go through the video clips, and just edit a video. So. Here's the progress I'm making them to invent one more wheel on this heat pump. I think the last video I did, I showed you guys that I was able to use my controller to, uh, you know, of course it stages the two steps of the VFD, which runs the three phase compressor. And then I have the pulse width modulated output goes over to my little adapter, which interfaces to the, you know, fan controller, the which in case has a inverter controller for these two, you know, synchronous DC motors that are in here. They work great. Is uh, the video coming out okay there? I don't know, pronounce your uh, username, it's like Zuz, Aaron Heat. You're not saying it's crappy, so I assume I must be working. But anyway, so this, this works, the fans work. Um, it'll work off the thermistor, which will stick over the liquid line right off of the coil, which will, between it and the outdoor air temperature sensor, Later on, before next winter, I will figure out some sort of defrost scheme. It could just do simple time and temperature pretty easily, or um, do add a little bit of demand to it so it avoids false defrosts. So the other thing I woke up the other day thinking, I was like, oh shit, when I first repiped this and I gutted the four port, four port manifold and everything out with the four expansion valves and everything, I'm like, I got to put an expansion valve for heat. I retained that reversion valve and all that stuff that this unit came for, but and I just repiped it with the scroll for those that need to catch up and just made it a single port, you know, single unit. It's only a three ton. It's just real tall. I'm just after the fact that it's a tall, skinny sucker, and I have two of them, and it's going to open up the possibilities for my RV gate. To take, I'm going to shave off like this much from them cube units so I can uh, back the trailer in with it still connected to the truck, which I can't do right now. Time of temp is so good, man. <laughs> Ryan, isn't it right? So, um, and Carrier. Carrier still uses time of temp. At least I don't see the high end of residential units, so I'm not speaking for those, speaking for strictly commercial. But anyway, I'm like, I need expansion valves in this. Now, the way this one works, it's a little tricky. Remember, I had to do the reverse valve, the expansion valve, the check valve. Reverse all that stuff into the Linux unit, which works great. It worked for two winters now without a defrost control. It never froze up. This unit has two coil halves, and they were joined together. So what I did for right now is I just put in the filter dryer, which you'll never see on VRFs, but this is not a VRF anymore. And it, I kept a splitter here, and it has, like, you know, the two coils joined together. And then your two common gas lines joined together from factory. And I kind of was observing the way this works but like if it's in a cooling mode you know all this collects and, and actually connect right here let me go to the bottom one because that one's altered already i want to screw you guys up but the four parallel ports going through the coil collects goes through here and it goes through there and just winds a few more times like you know for a sub cooler then comes out the common liquid line it's gonna you know collect with the top upper coil and go through the liquid line just like normal right well how are you gonna add an expansion valve here so what I did, like on the, when there's just a single one of these on that Linux one, I, of course, just put in a, a, a thermostatic expansion valve and a, and a check valve. There's a check valve right here. I bought two of them, you know, and did it the train style, you know, and it, and it works fine. So this one, you know, I'm like, you know what, <laughs> you know, and I have till next winter to make this work, but I have these I have like four of these expansion valves I've cut out of each one of these units. So this is what I've done up here. I cut this line right here and took off this where it fed right here. 
and it's got a loop it's going around to a check valve and coming back so when it's in cooling mode these four ports will combine go around to the check valve back here check valve right here and then continue back to the bottom a couple more loops the subcooler loop just like it normally did when it's in heating mode now that check valve will stop so the liquid coming from the indoor unit is going to go this way and it's going to go branch off this T. I made this is all custom. I just made this over the last hour here. And it's going to go up here through the strainer into an electronic expansion valve, then back down T into this liquid line. Then it's going to, because of the check valve, it'll, it'll just, it won't go that way. So it'll go this way. So uh, hopefully I put that all in right and it's going to feed through the feeder here. And then I'm going to do a second one. This is where it's going to be challenging, which again, I have till next winter to make it work. I'm going to just duplicate this down there with the second one. I'm going to have to make my own controller to uh, work those two. So I'll have to add a couple more thermistors, which quite a few came out because there was like one or two on each, uh, around each expansion valve before. So I should be able to put like, uh, how do you do it? One, you know, one on each of these, because this will be a common suction line when it's once it's in heating mode. So you put one thermistor on here for, for to getting the leaving temperature, suction temperature in in winter mode heating, and the other one basically uh, is right on the feeders here. My belly even put it on one of the feeders or stuff it in the coil. I don't know, probably clamp it on one of these. And what you do is just target five degrees superheat or something across the coil. Just it's what ball and beacon walk-in coolers have been doing for like 20 something years you know um and in with what units do and i'll just have to have them two independent ones i'll probably have to have a start figure out a starting point and then like have it look at the just the temperature of the inlet versus the outlet and when just try to correct it and it should work i don't see why it wouldn't <laughs> and if i get pissed off at a desert later on i'll buy two small expansion valves or something or rejoin them somehow and try to put one. But the thing is, I couldn't really do it like I normally did the other one because it has two separate coils together with two separate subcooling loops. It's basically one coil on top of another. It looks massive. It's only a three ton. So, anyway, let's go over here. I want to make the video too long, but I'll show you what I was doing. You guys will like this. Actually, I got to get the part. So, here is one of those expansion valves that I cut open. And you can see inside the port. I don't know how clear that's going to be. There's a body and a port, needle and everything. How it just goes in and through there. So that's that. And here's the dome of it with the screw drive that's in there. I stuck a little piece of tape on it. So if I run it, you could see it turn. So right now I have some basic electronics I made. Turn on my little microprocessor. Here's my 12 volts gonna power the uh, stepper part and I just made a, a thing just to pulse this thing in sequence it's it's a basically four bit binary <laughs> that makes a sequences it and you can see that spinning so that's that's opening and then this way is like closing the valve and you can see that's coming out it's basically a needle I don't think this thing's focusing the best for you We'll get to where it did, and you could definitely see that went way out. So that would be basically front seating or closing the expansion valve. Whoop, and then see it spinning the whole body, it kind of bottomed out. Then you go the other way, and this is opening. I'm just pushing a button. I'm just giving it a sequence of commands, and now it's opening the needle. But this is going to be a big circuit board. I mean, this is just two different things, but I'm already changed my mind on that. Just to show you why I'm having to use that, of course, on the, you're wondering how the other unit used to, uh, turn off my flashlight, how the other unit used to work. Well, I think it shows uh, here, this is the outdoor unit. This is the four ports. There was a check valve here, so when it was in cooling mode, it just went straight through the check valve, through the independent electronic expansion valves at each of the four high walls or cassettes or whatever is connected to it. And then when it goes the other way, it goes through, it showed a capillary tube. I don't remember it being, a, I don't think that capillary tube would be exact because you have these four, but it's probably just tube. I don't know. It shows four of them on that thing. It wasn't really much. It's just that small little quarter inch tube. So it's really not that much 
capillary. I think it was probably, I'm guessing maybe somebody who really knows the engineering on these things could mention it, but it could just be using whatever amount of refrigerants flowing inside for heat. It's just using the expansion valves going this direction because they do go both ways, no bypass there, and just controlling the feeding of the outdoor coil with these same ones. It's still, you know, working both ways. It would make sense. The, over here is what's left of the manifold. I'm cutting three of them off just for messing around. But look, there's no, there's no capillary tube in between there. It's just quarter inch tubing. And then here's the port. It went to the outside of the unit, goes to the inside. So it just, it had to have been controlling it with that expansion valve both ways. Funny thing is, I got this from somebody, but it's not going to work for me. And this is like a Sporlin electronic expansion valve, four wire. So these are six wire. Two of them are just, I've connected to 12 volts all the time. And then I'm just switching the other four legs, basically sequential, you know, stepper motor. And what I'm doing for that is just a pretty simple program. And it just, just for, and this is just testing with pushing my finger on the button. It's probably not going to use this at all when I get done. So I'm probably going to use an actual stepper driver later. But I just wrote by, you know, directly to port C. And I'm using the, lat, the bottom four bits. Just kind of write down, you know, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. And basically what it does, it goes, it turns on a winding. Because it's got a, a center tapped winding. So it's like a 12 volts going to it turns on winding then turns on the second winding then lets off that one so that's like three steps right there then it's gonna uh, uh turn on the next one while well, that one's off and then that one off and then the next one and then like that <laughs> it's kind of weird and then it's gonna go like this it's weird but it works that's how you sequentially drive the magnetic field and make rotation and of course you could count you know have memory count remember where it is so basically when uh if power just gets activated the process for the first time i'd have to do what what you notice that the uh oems do they drive the freaking expansion valves all the way closed or the other way i don't know i'm guessing it's one way or the other and then basically and it just does it in time just some over amount of time it's going to be dead you know headed front seated back seated whatever and then it'll open it it can count the pulses to a known position after that and once I kind of figure out what that good starting point is, I'll hard program it in my EEPROM and the chip. Whenever it first gets the power, it'll do that. And then um, from there, it'll just start doing correction. <laughs> and hope you never hit one extreme or another because then it's going to lose sync. So you might be able to write something in there, some sort of fail safe where it, uh, um, maybe every time the heating cycle starts, it does that close open and starts the compressor. Actually, the best way to do it would be for equalization is to open it all the way and then count in. So I'm kind of figuring the shit out as I'm talking to you guys. It'll be some trial and error. And as I was saying, he got a girl phone, iPhone 13. Should have got the freaking note, man. Or the, this is a S21. And uh, the 13, you know, they praise that phone, but, you know, the optical zooms like three times as high. It's ridiculous high on this. I can re zoom in on stuff from mountaintops on that thing to where it's almost impossible to hold the phone. But anyway, it's pretty pretty impressive. And I'm using my other phone to do the live stream while this one's connected to my Testo. And I pressurized it to 50 PSI of nitrogen before I went live, and it obviously not one leak, so that's awesome. And tomorrow or so, I'll do the bottom circuit. And then I'm going to get interrupted again. That's the other thing I was going to say. I didn't say at the beginning, but it's like I keep getting interrupted with shit we're doing. So I went out of town for three days for work. A couple weeks before that, I went out for like three days, four days to that some work convention thing. So last week to Vegas for three days for a work job site I had to go to. Went to k and with the family last Saturday. This Saturday coming up, got to move the daughter and her husband and family. For all we, so I mean that's so I can't like stay up late or anything doing that probably Monday I got to get up real early and go to a Flagstaff for a job so I will, I'll just have a little bit of a couple hours here and there to pluck along at this and that's it so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and braise in the other one like that and I'm going to put the thing together and I'm, it'll be ready for cooling heating I have all summer long to design my next circuit board for the stepper to drive the stepper no this works it's just, you know, optical isolators, which I probably don't need. I could drive 
transistors directly off the chip generally, but this keeps me protected. And it's working. It seems to have a decent amount of torque. I actually had a, one, those hooked up and was blowing through them while spinning it, and it actually did front seat and open up and seemed to work great. Um, so anyway, I'm like, you know, I'm just probably going to get some stepper motor drivers. So I'll have to experiment with these. I have a couple more steppers to play with that won't be in there. And, wow, these got smaller than the last time I bought those easy step boards or whatever. It looks like it has a little heat sink you're supposed to peel the sticker off and put it on. <laughs> People are getting these to like control, fix their printers and stuff. Ooh. But that thing's pretty small. So it sucks that my eyes are getting shitty. But I think all the input and outputs are down there. I might not be able to run the steppers in, in six wire mode, center tapped mode. I might have to uh, convert it over to four wire mode. And which is they just have is 1a 1b 2a 2b but i don't know i can try it out i can there might be different modes i might be able to still keep the center taps um tied to 12 volts and then connect these and see what happens but i don't know this doesn't look like it's one that has a lot of different modes it's getting it's got navel step reset whatever that is oh there's some speed things or whatever change the step so this is similar to the other ones i've used it's just way smaller uh what did i do the other one i must have put it away but that's the idea or i'll go back to making my own but i'll probably make another separate control board i'm going to run probably separate power supplies to not interconnect and risk blowing up the other controller i made i got a uh, a couple more little power supplies I was screwing with. These ones will take the full 24 volts rectified, you know, from the 24 volt supply and put it in here. I might, I'm going to add probably a transformer out into this unit just since I'm putting more and more stuff on and then probably use this for the 12 volts, the stepper, and I might actually bump it up a higher than 12 volts a little bit just to, since these have current limiting and you can adjust it, you can up the voltage, get a little better control on those without cooking the stepper motors. That's the cool thing about this is usually these things are pretty much set to where they give a pretty good little pulse and then do a holding current. So it holds the motor, but it's not full current overheating it, which this will do. Dude. Oh, I'm live streaming. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that won't cook that. Let's see what he's saying on his little comment there. Those guys are all talking about stupid iPhones. I'm oh. <laughs> doing my video. What's up with that? So it does look like the pressure is holding. So that's where that's at. This this is going to be... I'll probably slow down on this a little bit. Work on this after a while. I still got my... If you guys have seen the last couple of videos, I've been making my own circuit boards. I mean, some of these look pretty freaking cool after they come off the CNC. It does leave the big ground plane. I could program in to etch the extra copper off but i don't bother i just actually tie that to my uh common side of my electronic circuit so it kind of makes a ground plane all around like a shield tied to zero reference of my pick chip so that way maybe it kind of keeps in keeps the uh stray whatever interference messing with the thermistors and stuff input but i'll have to make another pick chip reading their misters four four of them and running two expansion valves so i'll be cool but that'll come later i the, i just really gotta focus on getting this all braced together here's the other one of these i'll put down there and just, and basically uh all this stuff i just i was like man i don't have any t's or anything but you know what i just take straight copper right here and then i just uh drill a, a hole real careful while i was out deeper and everything and then i use my uh swage set these things and i found out if i if i use a, a drill hole small hole and then hit with this this makes like nice thick nurdled spots for sticking in either pressure switches which is all like this diameter or like this tube which i was using which is about a quarter inch or so or actually i was smaller than quarter inch i use a quarter inch here and a little smaller than over there swaged it up but yeah it works so the one side's in there and i repressurized it and then tomorrow or so i'll do that one that one looks like it might actually be a little harder plus it's i'm gonna have to get down on my knees a little less room here to cut than i had up here on this one had a 
a little more room right here. Yeah, this was this was in here. So I cut it, swedge that three eighths, swedge this three eighths, swedge. swedge. So nice having swedges. I, I didn't really use any fittings at all, and basically made this piece. Use my tubing bender into the swedge twice. Put in the check valve right here. You know, swedged, like I said, with the quarter inch to make it thick and heavy to put a nice solder. This tube is not dropped down in there, blocking the flow. This tube is just barely in there, just like factory, and then I got soldered. I mean, it, I don't see why it isn't going to work. So, it's coming together. So, anyway, I just wanted to make that video um, live just so I go over the gist of the update of the Frankenstein here and not have to edit and out that kind of stuff. So it doesn't look like there's any questions or anything. So I'm going to get out early. My daughter, daughters want me to take her to get something to eat anyway, but you guys are talking about Chinese slave made phones or something in the chat. <laughs> I can't help but mess with you guys. So Anyway, uh, and the other thing is, once this one's done, there's a whole nother one I have to do. <laughs> Unless I... I don't know, man. Summer's coming before we know it. With that, I will catch you guys later, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. We'll catch you later. Later's all. You guys about to end your chat there, so... <laughs> Guys better have shared emails or something. <laughs> Until the next time, man. Or just, I guess, go in the, the chat that's not live. I got to remember where the freaking stop button is. Oh, there it is. It's been so long. Anyway, catch you later. Bye.